the last two years have been hell. COVID has been horrible. The struggle has been so real. We're hurting, guys. Hi, guys! Welcome back to our headquarters, Revolution Gang. If you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution. So we are on 19,000. 700 subscribers for the babies guys let's get to this 20k and let's get to it quick my boy okay it's getting it's getting embarrassing oh wait i'm posting this on december 1st so how can i miss out on the opportunity of saying kidizemba boss kidizemba 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 Another year with COVID, huh? You know they say what doesn't kill you mutates and tries again. Hello Omicron, hello new variant. I want to get a few more administrative details out the way. I'm actually so surprised by me being so hyped right now because my heart is so heavy. You guys don't even understand. First of all, I got some really bad news today. Like, I'm actually... <laughs> I'm actually pretty sad. I'm actually like, I'm, I'm sad. I'm really sad. Apart from that, this is my second time recording this video. I recorded a video for an hour, an hour long video before my night class from six to nine. So that after my night class, I could just edit it, right? And this was a hard video for me to make the first time around. Then I made it and I was proud of it. And guess what? My microphone was I don't even know what is happening with my microphone. But anyway, my microphone didn't capture any of the sound. Any, 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 any. I'm telling you, it was shh. Guys, please turn on your bell. Please turn on your post notifications. The reason why I say that, I don't say it just to say it. The reason why I say it is because while you know that I post videos every single Wednesday at around 6 p.m., sometimes I don't post at exactly 6 p.m. so you don't know when it's out, number one. However, every Wednesday, it's me and you baby baby you know um but apart from that as some of you may know i post vlogs on mondays however i let you guys know that i'm going to post those every other monday and not necessarily every monday so if you have your notification on you'll know the week when i actually post a video another reason is i have a segment on my channel called the black excellence series where i post entrepreneurs business people or people who are exceeding in different fields and they give you all the know-how mistakes they've made how to get funding how to start a business you know stuff like that if you haven't checked it out go check it out especially if you like want to get into business or and there's all different types of field there's property there's construction there's hosting and tv there's influencing like toby rose broke down how to be an influencer like perfectly um but there's that and I post that like not even every other Sunday. I post it on Sundays when I post it. Um, and then I want to start a new segment on the channel called Faith Stories where people share their journey with God. Why do they believe in God and stuff like that. And that's going to be posted on Sundays every other Sunday. So if you have your notification on then you'll know when these videos come out. So please if you haven't literally takes a second. Don't be embarrassing. Click the button below. Thank you vibes. Okay, and then with admin, lastly, guys, you know what, nah, I'm here trying to make ends meet. Please watch the ads. Please don't be skipping my ads. Guys, I know it's hard. If the ads are like a minute long, two minute long, just watch the first 30 seconds. If the ad is like 15 seconds long, 30 seconds long, please now. Come now, eh? Please, eh? Just watch. Watch. Find out how you can get a loan for a dog even though you don't like dogs then you'll share the information with someone else maybe but anyway i would appreciate and i would love if you could please support me by not skipping the ads thank you getting into today's video today i'm going to be talking about covid trauma death pain loss struggle life and all its pains before i truly start start the topic do you see my t-shirt god consent god consent god consent I just want to remind you guys that consent is best kids and you should not be having sex with anyone who by the way is not 
mentally capable to make the decision to have sex that includes being intoxicated being drugged that includes people who are too young like children who are not old enough to agree to consenting relationship with adults there's a power dynamic there that gives you the advantage so just remember consent is best and mind you consent is a yes and active engagement active participation in whatever you're doing oh that must come with the yes by the way but i'm saying like if someone is just laying there like a dead body and you're doing your thing you should probably stop you should probably stop immediately um and i also want to say that uh, consent can be taken away at any time during the activities i'm talking about this girl could have like listen came to start she found you she started you she provoked you now there you are hard ready to lay down the pipe and she says actually this is not a good idea guess what my baby she has the right to do that and you should let her leave i also want to remind you guys that men are victims of rape as well and deserve to be protected we need to protect little boys from grown predator women who think it's okay to sleep with children and we need to stop clapping for little boys for being sexually assaulted by disgusting older women and men anyway that's not what my video is about today but i just wanted to let you guys know got consent got consent consent is key so let's get into the video um i'm a bit disappointed again with me having to do it again because the first one i feel was so <sighs> i laid everything out but anyway let's get into it today i want to talk about covid among many other things and i want to talk about how hard covid has been and i know this may sound like yeah though covid's been hard we all know but i mean have you guys really stopped to deep it have you guys really stopped to actually stop and think about how hard covid has been out of nowhere this thing came and changed your entire life in a way you never expected i mean it almost gave a sense of powerlessness it reminded you me us of our mortality as humans the fact that we are disposable sometimes we think we're indisposable but we're so disposable you know something that can just come as a cold or a flu or whatever can come and wipe out thousands of people and i want to talk about that the death aspect i think so many of us have been dealing with death in an unhealthy manner as in the number of deaths we've been dealing with i feel is not good for us as humans we've literally been living in a horror movie it feels like a really this feels this feels like black mirror to be quite honest you know um but going into death i want to talk about how there was a time on twitter where all you saw was death all you saw was guys my mom got my, my parents have covid uh, my dad is fine but my mom is fighting for her life please keep your prayers up the next tweet you see my mom is getting better but everyone's so sick please keep your prayers up next thing you see my mom died two days later my dad died those are the kind of tweets we were seeing those are the kind of stories we're hearing from people those are the kind of things that some people were living through that you live through you know and to personalize it for me both my parents were like on their deathbeds with covid earlier this year and i remember getting a call from che he's the one from i smarter than a fifth grader and he was crying and i was like what's wrong chet he's like mom and dad are in the hospital they're not okay mind you i'm here i had to call 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 see who i can reach find out what's going on and the doctor told my dad if you wake up tomorrow thank you god you know so i was in that situation as well and it was so stressful because i was just thinking what am i going to do if my parents die i made i realized i'm not ready for that to happen you know um I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to go back home, raise my brothers. Like, I'm not going to be able to come back home in time because borders are closed. I'm going to miss their funerals. Like, you, do you know, the, the, it was torturous. It was torturous thinking my, my parents could die and I will not have been able to say goodbye and I won't be able to come to the funeral. By the time I get back, it will just be a tombstone that I go see, you know. And the sad thing is, for me, they recovered, thank God. For, but how many people's parents didn't? How many people's husbands, wives, children, partners, best friends, cousins, family members died? How many times have you reached have you received a call this year finding out someone else is dead? How many of you your heart skipped a beat because your family contracted COVID and they were um what do you call high risk? You know we've been dealing with death in such high levels and the overwhelming thing is that regular death didn't stop what i mean by that is yes we're dealing with COVID death but cancer was still killing people car accidents were still killing people many things were still killing people because people die 
and it just made everything so unbearable there are homes where people became orphans people who had loving parents suddenly became orphans people who had one parent suddenly became orphans people went from being a child or relatively a child and by a child I mean like even if you're in your 20s but when your parents are alive taking care of their own kids you, you, there's a responsibility you don't have to to meet depending on your home situation but there are some people who had to become parents overnight to children there are some siblings who were overcome with grief but had to be strong because they had to be strong for their younger siblings the death we are dealing with is so overwhelming you know and along with that death comes economic challenge because in some places people's breadwinners died the only two people who were working in the household died now there you guys are dealing with covid death and financial crisis you know how am i going to finish school how am i going to feed these people how am i gonna you know what i'm saying and the hard thing about covid death breadwinners is unemployment you're dealing with unemployment because covid came and hundreds thousands of businesses closed in a country where unemployment is already peaking graduate non-graduate unemployment is peaking covid came makes it worse your breadwinners in the house just died some people were no longer able to stay where they stay at that to find a place to stay during covid in a time when people aren't willing to open their doors my guy because covid you must figure out where you're gonna stay you and two other kids three other kids that grief that trauma it doesn't just go away just because life keeps moving and that's the thing as well it's like we're going through this huge life shift traumatic experience and we're adapting we're creating zoom and microsoft this and you know life keeps moving and it's like sometimes you feel like it's overwhelming because life just keeps moving but there you are dealing with so much and it just feels like life is moving on and people are just going about their lives and you're there because your whole life has been destroyed by something you couldn't have planned for by something you didn't deserve you know so it's like life keeps moving and you feel the pressure to keep up with life because we can't stay stagnant you know we can't just sit and grieve forever we have to keep moving but life keeps moving and here you are dealing with this newfound trauma unsure of how to deal with it i don't know about you guys but i used to feel like trauma is only for like war veterans or like abuse victims or like something like you know that some things happen in life where we're all like, yo, yeah, I know, that's, that's tough. I thought it was for that, but trauma comes from breakups. Trauma comes from being cheated on. Trauma comes from all sorts of things, depending on you, the traumatized person. So some of us are dealing with trauma, and sometimes it feels like it's selfish to deal with your trauma because other people are dealing with bigger things. So for instance, when COVID came and we were all forced to isolate, some people got active, went to the gym, came up with these new bodies, but a lot of people, Walt Smith shared in his journey, we were eating, we were stressed, we were at home, not able to be active, gyms were closed, people gained weight, and what does that come with? That comes with a new body that you may not like, body dysmorphia, and you're dealing with that. Now, I'm not labeling that as trauma, but I'm saying it is something that is valid that you're dealing with, but it feels like in comparison to like everything else going on, you're not allowed to feel what you feel. Sometimes it feels like, like for me, for instance, I, I worry about my parents. I have just every day, not every day, but like a lot, I think, like, thank God they're alive. And I think about, man, I hope they don't die. I think that sometimes now. Just COVID had me so shook. You know, I don't like when my parents do, they don't do anything unsafe, but I don't want them to do anything like too much, you know, because of what I experienced earlier. But you see, for someone whose parents lived, that feels like, yeah, but then, compare yourself to people whose parents died you know so you're dealing with all those kinds of trauma and some people are getting help for it but some people don't even have an avenue for that help some people have trauma they don't even recognize so for instance some people right now are dealing with trauma of death some people are because of all the death we've seen there are people who are just more death scared they worry more about 
their families. They check up on you more often than what you feel is required. And there are some people who developed paranoia as a result of COVID. And so now they've become hyper paranoid. And there are people who are not able to express themselves as they go through this. They don't know how to put into words the pain in their chest, the tightness, the fact that it feels like you're in a cage, the fact that it feels like you can't breathe, the fact that you're stuck in your head and you can't get out, you can't stop thinking about this, you wanna stop being scared but you can't, it overwhelms you. And so because you don't know what to say, how to express that, you lash out at people, you push them away because you don't know how to express yourself. Because you're dealing with trauma you never expected. You're dealing with pain you weren't ready for. You're dealing with emotions you haven't processed. The help you require is not quite there yet. Because there are bigger things in the world going on than what your pain is. And I want to remind you that whatever your position is, whether it's trauma, fear of death, dealing with unemployment, because unemployment brings depression. Let's talk about that. Increase, I read a thing that said that uh, Gauteng suicide rates have increased to 90%. Guys, do you ever stop to think about how depressed you are? How depressed your family is? How depressed people are? Unemployment, rejection, rejection so it makes you question yourself, question your ability. You find yourself unable to take care of your family. And speaking of unemployment, Let's bring looting into the situation because things were not bad enough for us. We had to come and add some spice. Mm? Looting happened. That was devastating. That was during COVID. Thousands of businesses went out of business. Some didn't have um, insurance. I know the government released the, um, announced the aid for those who didn't have insurance. I don't know how that ended up playing out. But regardless, do you know how many people lost their jobs? That affected my household. We were a victim of that. And we're still dealing with the remnants of that, the consequences of that today. How many people are still dealing with that? How many people are traumatized because of the, the gunshots they heard outside of their house? Today, how many people still don't have jobs because they're, they're, the places where they worked were looted and shut down? Now add that to the whole unemployment thing because we really needed it. Life has been hell. The last two years have been hell. COVID has been horrible. The struggle has been so real. We're hurting guys. We're not fine, we're not okay. Many people are not. And so as I make this video, I want this to be a space where we recognize what we're feeling. If you can relate to anything that I've said, comment down below. And if you can't, then comment down below what your story is. Let's talk about it. Let's validate ourselves. But I also want to make this video not only to remind you to validate your feelings and acknowledge what we're going through, but to remind you to be kind. Roberto was fighting cancer before he died. Chadwick Boseman was fighting cancer before we died. We didn't know anything until they died. You don't know what people are dealing with and let's not wait for them to die first for us to be nice or kind. Whatever you can do in your small way. Man, please. Now that I've spoken a bit about some of the things that we've struggled with and by no means do I think I hit everything, please add more stuff below. I wanna talk more about resolutions. Oh, and there is no one true resolution, by the way. This is just stuff that maybe we can consider and do to help ease our pain. Number two, is it number two? Either way, get therapy if you can. If you can. We sometimes put that off easily. Get therapy, get therapy, therapy is expensive. Therapy is always covered on medical aid. If you can, get therapy. And if not, and this is no replacement for therapy, but I want you to try this exercise, right? I want you to gather three, four people, including yourself, more if you like. Doesn't It can be close friends, it can be just, just like, you know, people you know. And I want you guys to sit in a circle, dim the lights a bit, like it shouldn't be like harsh lights, you know, but something that'll calm you guys down. 
and get the conversation started. And what this conversation is, I want you to ask yourself, what have I lost these last two years? What newfound fears do I have? What are some newfound insecurities that I have? I feel like I'm bound by, insert, whatever it is. I just wish we could, insert. And by we could, it's like, I wish we could move on from COVID. I wish we could get jobs. I wish we could, whatever it is you want to fill in. So you ask each of these questions and everyone gets a chance to answer one question at a time and allow people to talk really hear them you're not there to debate fight argue and validate hear what people are saying you can have a talking piece where only a person who's holding the talking piece can talk when you're done with those questions you ask yourself what have i gained these last two years i now have a newfound appreciation of things may not be perfect but at least i Going forward, I will. You answer those questions for yourself. And I might sound like I'm being silly. If you guys want me to actually do it with some people, comment down below. I'll try to get some people because it obviously takes vulnerability. But um, the purpose of this exercise is to hear out loud, for you to say out loud what you've been dealing with. And you can add or remove questions, whatever you want, but it's to say out loud what you've been feeling. Because sometimes when you speak aloud, you realize what you've been holding in. Another benefit is that some people may be able to put into words what you haven't been able to put into words. So it helps you find voice for that which you could not express by yourself. One of the best things ever is to have your pain validated. It's for you to know that you're not crazy and feeling what you're feeling. You're not alone. You're not struggling by yourself because pain is isolating. Shame is isolating. Sometimes we look at other people and everyone seems okay. Everyone seems to be doing well except for me. You'll be surprised. So try out that exercise. If you do try it out, let me know. Send me a message on Instagram. Or you could, if you don't have Instagram because I know some people don't, go to Twitter. Or honestly, you could just comment on one of my community posts. I see like all the comments. One of the most important things for me is relying on God and prayer. It's definitely a best for last type thing. Honestly, God has been my hope and I should have a pillow on here. Here it is. It says hope. It says to have belief, desire, to place trust in a life's plan. Except for me, it's not a life's plan. It's like er, God's plan, but hope. God for me is a source of hope. As hard as it may be, now is not the time for your faith in God to fall. Now when you realize how destructible we are, is your time to reach out and cling to God. God has been my peace, he's been my hope. Days where I feel like I'm overwhelmed and I can't do this. He is the pillar that holds my life. He keeps me strong. He keeps my head above the water. I say, God, I don't know what's going on, but I trust in you. And I know you're in control. And I know you love me. And I know you care for me. I know you'll never leave me nor forsake me. I want to end off this video by saying a prayer. Father oh God, I bless your name. Lord, I worship you and I glorify your name. I give you all the praise and all the glory. You are the mighty God. You are the great I am. And there is nothing and no one on the heavens and in the earth that can compare to you, my God. Father God, I thank you that we are alive. I thank you that I'm alive to make this video and the person watching this is alive to watch and receive this video. Lord, we've been through so much these last two years and it hurts. Our hearts have cried. Our spirits have been broken, Lord. Days have been dark. Families have been changed forever. Families have been separated. But Lord, you are our light forever. Your light shines and the darkness cannot comprehend it. Lord, I want to make this prayer for anyone. For the person watching this who was hurt, who was scared, who was anxious, depressed, suicidal. I pray, my God, that you may give them peace. Peace that surpasses human understanding. 
I pray that you may be near to them, O oh God, because you said you are close to the brokenhearted and you will comfort them. O oh Lord my God, comfort them. Comfort them, Lord. Let them feel your love. Wrap them in your love. Wrap them in your hands. Let them find shelter and peace in the shadow of your wings. Give them relief. Some people have been carrying burdens for so long, baggage for so long, they don't even remember what it feels like to be light. Oh Lord, remove every baggage. Remove every burden. Remove it, Lord. Lighten their load, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for relief. And I pray that you may strengthen them physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Strengthen them, oh God. For anyone who's living with fear, remind them of 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. I pray for everyone watching this video who needs your touch. Touch Holy Spirit. Touch Holy Spirit. Because with just one touch, everything changes. With just one touch, everything changes. Lord, I pray that for every person right now whose bones are dry, Holy Spirit, restore them. Let every dry bone be restored. I pray for renewal. I pray for revival. I pray for restoration. Lord, I pray that everything in them that has died, that should not have died, I pray for resurrection. Oh, Lord, my God, resurrect them. Resurrect them, Lord. We pray for renewal, revival, restoration, resurrection in the name of Jesus. Someone's hope has died, resurrected, Lord. Someone's faith has died, resurrected, Lord. Touch Holy Spirit. Touch Holy Spirit. Move Holy Spirit. Touch that person. Touch that heart. Touch that person. Touch, Lord. Just one touch and everything changes. Move. Yes, Lord. We surrender all to you withholding nothing. We are nothing without you. Need you, Lord. That person whose heart is blocked to you, who doesn't want to hear your word, who doesn't want to see you, their heart is blocked, they have a heart of stone. Yes, give them a heart of flesh. Transform that stone to a heart of flesh. Build them from the inside out. We pray for mercy, we pray for favor, but Lord, we pray for forgiveness. We pray for forgiveness and a forgiving heart. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Most High God. Receive all the glory. You are the Lord. That is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. Let faith rise up in every person hearing this word. Let faith rise up. Oh, heart. Cover these prayers by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you guys know the Lord's Prayer, I want us to make two prayers together. So I want us to do the Lord's Prayer and I want us to say the grace, okay? So we're going to start with the Lord's Prayer. Say with me now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we're going to say the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide in us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. That's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe, and I will be back with more videos. Peace and love, guys.